according to Kathleen Wynne, Doug Ford is akin to Donald Trump. Guess what, folks? Contrary to what the premier might feel, that's not condemnation. <laughs> that's a compliment. So last week, David Livingston, the ex-chief of staff for former Premier Dalton McGuinty, well, he was sentenced to four months in jail for deleting documents. Livingston is taking one for the team, of course, choosing not to rat out his superiors, who surely instructed him to commit this destruction of public documents. Now, as he appeals his conviction, he'll probably still not sing in terms of naming names, that's too bad. And you know, folks, to paraphrase a line from Pulp Fiction, give me a pair of pliers and a blowtorch and put me in a room with Livingston for 10 minutes and <laughs> I'll get you some answers that we need. But in light of this crook heading to the Crowbar Motel, PC leader Doug Ford had this to say, quote, if Kathleen Wynne tried to pull these kinds of shady tricks in private life, then there would be a few more liberals joining David Livingston in jail. Ontario deserves answers about how big Kathleen Wynne's mess really is, end quote. I think this is what's known as merely stating a fact, but Wynne, ooh, she has very thin skin on this file, folks, so she came out swinging. And you know what? She actually played the Trump card. Doug Ford sounds like Donald Trump, and that's because he is like Donald Trump. He'll say anything about anyone at any time. Because just like Trump, it is all about him. Just like Donald Trump, there is only one way to deal with this kind of behavior. You have to stand up to him, and you have to name the behavior for what it is. Because that is how you deal with a bully. Wow. Well, here's what Doug Ford had to say when he heard of Wynne's pithy prose. She can fight an election in another country. I'm focusing on the people of Ontario. I'm focusing on jobs in Ontario. Now, that was a pretty good comeback, but I don't think it was the best comeback. In fact, I think the most daring comeback would have been for Ford to embrace that comparison because for the vast majority of Ford Nation boosters, the Doug being labeled as the Donald isn't a bad thing, it's a compliment. Oh sure, for those Torontonians who reside south of Bloor, or the SOBs as I like to call them, anti-Trump rhetoric works, but for the rest of the province, having a Donald Trump calling the shots at Queen's Park, well that would be sublime, especially given the win liberal economic performance of late. Oh, speaking of which, around the same time Wynn was making her comments, Moody's Investor Service downgraded its outlook on Ontario's finances to negative from stable thanks to the Liberals' plan to run six consecutive multi-billion dollar deficits. <laughs> Moody, you know, that's a really good word to describe Ontarians these days. And you know, folks, Wynne's lack of acumen regarding the use of Trump's name as a pejorative term it kind of reminds me of the classic SCTV sketch, Count Floyd's Have Yourself a Scary Little Christmas. The running joke regarding Count Floyd, of course, was that this horror film host would forever screw up screening a movie that he thought would be horrific for his audience. Inevitably, the film would be a boring dud or an art house snooze fest in which scares were non-existent all of which would leave poor Count Floyd in a state of depression. But then, during the taping of his holiday special, the Christmas miracle occurs for Count Floyd when Lucille Ball actually experiences a moment of genuine terror. I think the kid from Deliverance was right on one point, though, and that is when you're negotiating a settlement, it's imperative that the equity of both <laughs> Lucy, what's the matter? <laughs> Well, that's good. Yeah, that's right. Being scared on a show called Have Yourself a Scary Little Christmas, that is a good thing. And likewise, for the rank and file members of Ford Nation that shall be bringing about regime change come June 7th, Doug Ford being compared to Donald Trump, well, <laughs> that's a pretty damn good thing too. For the Rebel Dot Media, I'm David the Menzoid Menzies. Hey folks, The Rebel has a brand new app. Please download that app and take The Rebel with you wherever you go.